Yeah. That was a practical demonstration of suspense. Uh, which is part of what I'm going to spend some time talking about, suspense. Um, that state and that moment and that energy of suspense, uh, such as, you know, suspended in mid-air, not like suspended because you've been naughty in school or something, although the one might lead to the other, uh, but the energy of the moment where we do not know exactly what's going to happen. It can be quite scary for, you know, wonderful, creative, dynamic people like us who are so used to having it in being in a stream and a flow of cre creativity and, and uh, on constantly, 24-7. And then suddenly you have these, every now and then, these gaps of <laughs> suspense. Uh, this is why I chose the title um, Between Yes and No for, for this um, for this talk. Um, I have to be very honest with you and say that uh, I have not prepared myself very much. Because I think, at least this is how I'm rationalizing it. You know, of course, I'm hugely busy and, and very, you know, uh, sought after a talker and extremely busy, so, you know, I have been very busy and have difficulty preparing everything. But uh, I like more to rationalize it with that I wanted you to feel the suspense that we are here together. To kind of, that we are at the same time in the same place and equally unsure about what's going to happen. Uh, so if this talk turns out catastrophic, it's, I just have to apologize. But at least there was an idea behind it. Uh, <clears throat> I have a dream about two battle tanks. One has yes written on it, and the other no. And they are facing each other. Uh, their colors are white and blue, reminiscent of the United Nations vehicles, for instance or um, childish toys. And between that yes and no is where I live as an artist. And I thought I wanted to show you a couple of examples of what that in-between state can lead to. So. Um, some of you might be familiar with some of my earlier projects uh, because they tend, to, they tend to get a bit of attention. Uh, and I must, of course, confess that this is also some of the purpose for the forms that I choose for the, for the project. Uh, another reason why my projects often creates a lot of dialogue, a lot of discussion, I think is because they are taking place in a field between two spheres, you could say, between the artistic sphere, between the art, the, the galleries and the theater stages and the um, multimedia installations and the public debate, the political sphere. And I don't know uh, where it belongs. And Seemingly, many others also don't know where it belongs, where I th which I think is a good thing. Uh, when my projects are uh, uh, discussed in the media, they are usually in the news pages, not in the culture section, which of course I think is, is um, both very interesting, but it's, o it's also where I like to be, you know? Because the culture sections are something you have to be motivated for. You know, you op sometimes you just jump over the culture sections and go straight to the cartoons after you read the foreign news section. And speaking of foreign news, uh, I thought I would show you a little, just a, a short few clips from um, an earlier project of mine, which was called Miss Landmine. 
uh, this project uh, was created in Angola, which is a uh, southwest African country. It's uh, situated between Congo and uh, Namibia on the west coast of Africa. Uh, it has a huge landmine problem, and it also loves beauty pageants. So the project is more or less what it sounds like. It is a beauty pageant for landmine survivors. Uh, I will show you a short uh, trailer from uh, one of the documentaries about the Cambodian version of the project, as I did it first in Angola and then the year after in Cambodia, which is in Southeast Asia. But that, just like Cambodia, has a huge problem with landmines left over from a civil war. So here's from one of the doc international documentaries that was made about that project. <laughs> <laughs> she has the most beautiful hair in all of Kampong Cham province. You are looking very, very good, just so that you know it. If the government makes a couple of phone calls, we have many possibilities. So you're doing a flesh market with amputees. Hallelujah, Morton. The Prime Minister has issued a public decree. These guys kill and imprison dissidents. Yes, that was uh, a short trailer for uh, the Miss Landmine, uh, one of the several documentaries that was made um, about Miss Landmine. This, this, I think, is the, the most thorough, the, the one that will give you most information about the whole uh, journey of the project. Uh, then I want to proceed through the Miss Landmine project. I could, of course, I could have as you might imagine, I could talk in at least uh, 18 days <laughs> about the, only the Ms. Landman project. But um, as we have already touched into here, it's, there is plenty of information available. So um, feel free. Here is one of the candidates. Uh, she is 19 years old, and her name is Maria Con Fatima da Contesau. Uh, she is not only, um, as you can see, she has not only lost a leg, but she's also eight and a half months pregnant. So she is definitely not your average uh, beauty pageant contestant. Um, this is Song Kosal. She is Cambodian. And she stepped on a landmine when she was eight years old uh, during the Cambodian Civil War. And I thought it would look great if she sat in a tree. And she has a little fear of heights, so she was not so happy about it. But I insisted. That's th this is a good thing about being an artist. You can always say that you're working for a higher purpose you know, than yourself. And this is one of the pictures that uh, was quite much discussed. This is what I, my also one of my uh, private uh, fantasies, the beautiful women with weapons. Uh, this is Dos Sophep, who later actually became the one to win the Cambodian uh, landmine, Miss Landmine. Um, and as when you, when you travel around and do projects in different cultural contexts and societies, you of course have to be culturally sensible, um, sensitive, but not oversensitive. So in Angola, for instance, I discovered that it would be no problem to take bikini pictures of the women. Um, they had no problem with that. Uh, I did not have to persuade them uh, very much to do it, apart from that I thought they would look both good and horrible in bikini. Horrible in a good way. And again, we are in an in-between landscape 
here, or if you will, uh, a landscape with a strong inner tension between the beautiful and the horrible. And this is where I like art to be. This is art's privilege to be able to say many things at once. Um, if you narrow it down to one message, then it becomes something else. It becomes politics or entertainment or a sales pitch. But art, in my definition of the word, has the privilege of working in the space between yes and no. Um, but you have to have some fun also. This is from uh, my one-year career as an embedded artist with the Norwegian Armed Forces. Uh, they actually, believe it or not, they called me. I did not call them. They called me to, uh, and invited me to be their artist in residence at the Museum of, military, uh, of the Military in Oslo, in the Akershus Festning. Uh, and this is from uh, my first project, um, which was called Honest John, uh, which consisted of uh, a seven-meter uh, nuclear-capable missile from, the, from back in the Cold War. These missile types was actually stationed in Finnmark, close to the, in the far north of Norway, close to the uh, Soviet, then Soviet border. Uh, it consists of that, and to my knowledge, the world's biggest inflatable condom. Um, that was produced, specially produced in China. I had some very entertaining uh, order uh, conversations with the... Uh, one, one of the bonus perks about being an artist, so all this interesting... Uh, when you sometimes hear yourself discuss with the, with the, the condom, uh, the inflatable condom dealer man, uh, yeah, well, you know, I think it should be... Uh, it should probably... It would need an extra wall, because if it's not inflatable, then it would probably look, and then he takes, he pauses a little bit and he says, it would probably look like a condom after, you know. Uh. Um, so we had, to, we had to work around it. This is a dog, um, and it's also a trailer for uh, my latest project, of which actually I think you can read a little uh, notice in today's Bergens Tiden, the local newspaper. Uh, because I have had a half-year-long uh, controversy with the Norwegian Minister of Royal Affairs, which is also what happens when you go into deep waters between yes and no. I'm saying that we are going to the world's biggest theatre performance, which is the country of North Korea, and we will play our parts within that performance. So, uh, we actually... This is a documentary film that was made by the Norwegian State Broadcaster, about the first Norwegian May 17th festival in North Korea, which I organized this year. And again, we are in a landscape between yes and no, between should we, should one at all collaborate with uh, states that are known or uh, infamous for their totalitarianism, or should one leave them alone? And how do we see each other? That's one of several possible clues. So, there. We end. Thank you.